JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's uh, daily market review for March the 17th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, today we will talk about uh, the equities uh, which resu resume their tumble after central bank actions failed to panic. Uh, we also have a G7 finance minister's uh, call uh, later today and as for the rest of uh, the event we get the UK employment report, the German ZW survey, the US retail sales industrial and manufacturing production, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report uh, on crude oil inventories and as for tonight we get New Zealand's current account balance, Japan's trade balance and we also have one speaker. Now. As it is always the case, let's start with the performance of the dollar against the other uh, G10 currencies. The dollar traded higher against most of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian Morning Tuesday. It gained the most versus Aussie, CAD and the Pound in that order, while it underperformed versus the Euro and the Swiss franc. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Yen. Now, the relative strength of the Euro, the Yen and the Franc combined with the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi as well as the oil-related Canadian dollar and the Norwegian Crown suggests that markets uh, traded in a risk-off mode for another day. Indeed, most uh, EU indices slid more than 5%. Uh, with the tumble accelerating during the US session, all three of Wall Street uh, indices fell around 12%, recording, uh, recording their biggest uh, drop since uh, the Black Monday of uh, 1987. That said, panic eased somewhat during the Asian morning today, with uh, Japan's uh, Nikkei closing virtually unchanged and China's Shanghai Composite uh, losing only 0.34%. Uh, now, during the early Asian morning Monday, uh, three major central banks decided to ease their respective policies further outside scheduled meetings in an attempt to safeguard the global economy from the negative effects of, this of the fast spreading coronavirus. The chorus started with uh, the RBNZ, which cut its um, benchmark rate by 75 basis points to 0.25%. The FOMC was next with an even with an even bolder action, US policymakers decided to reduce the federal funds rate target by uh, 100 basis points and noted that they will start purchasing a broader range of US uh, treasuries, which means a new round of QE. Later in the, a in the Asian session, the Bank of Japan, although it did not cut rates, uh, pledged to double, uh, to double the pace of its ETF purchases. However, uh, the decisions had no success in calming panicked investors. On the contrary, market participants got even more worried as central banks may have spent too much ammunition too early and that they will have limited scope for supporting battered economies in the not too distant future. On top of that, it seems that the restrictive measures worldwide have done very little to contain the spreading of, of the virus. Although both infected cases and deaths have slowed somewhat yesterday, as we can see from, uh, from the graphs here. Remember anything above 0 0.2 acceleration, anything below 0 0.2 a slowdown. So although we had a slowdown yesterday, most days have been marked by acceleration in both cases and deaths. 
Sentiment uh, was somewhat improved, as we said, during the Asian session, perhaps on hopes that governments will join, to res will join the rescue mission by aggressive uh, fiscal spending. G7 finance ministers may hold a call tonight, something that raised speculation they could coordinate a fiscal response. Now, in any case, our uh, view has yet to change. We don't believe that monetary and fiscal stimulus will be enough to save the global economic outlook. With the virus still spreading fast and with no vaccine on the horizon, lower rates are, un are unlikely to prompt consumers and businesses to start opting for cheap loans and start, and start spending. In a still uh, chaotic situation, more restrictive measures may be in the works, which could do well way further on the global economic outlook. So, bearing in mind all this uncertainty, it would be naive to assume that everything is already priced in. Therefore, we stick to our guns that there is still room for equities and other risk-linked assets to continue tumbling, while safe havens may keep attracting flows. The exception in this pattern uh, in this pattern appears to be gold and other precious metals. It seems that gold took off its safe haven suit, tumbling uh, more than 3% uh, yesterday. Why is that? In a leveraged world, uh, holders of long positions in the yellow metal may have liquidated, uh, may, may have liquidated uh, their positions in order to cover losses and margin calls elsewhere. Now, in the FX world, we repeat that the best uh, gauges of such market conditions are combinations of a risk-linked currency and a safe haven one. For example, Aussie Yen, Aussie Swiss Franc, Kiwi Yen and Kiwi Franc may be the pairs to continue sliding the most. On the other hand, Euro Aussie and Euro Kiwi may prove to be the main gainers. Okay, here we have a graph of gold versus the Aussie yen inverted. So you can see that while Aussie yen has been falling in a risk of environment, yen, uh, the go excuse me, gold has been rising as a safe haven. So it was acting as a safe haven. But recently, although Aussie yen continued sliding uh, during uh, due to uh, the market turmoil and the risk of environment gold has been falling sharply and this indicates that uh, investors are liquidating uh, positions in order to uh, cover losses elsewhere maybe in equities or margin calls in general so as uh, for the rest of today's events during the european morning we have the uk employment data for january the unemployment rate is expected to have remained unchanged at 3.8%, while average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are forecast to have accelerated to 3% year-over-year from 2.9%. The excluding bonuses rate is anticipated to have remained unchanged at 3.2%. We don't believe that this set of data will prove so determinant with regards to the Bank of England's future course of action, as they refer to a period uh, before the fast spreading of the coronavirus around the globe. Last Wednesday, the Bank of England decided to cut interest rates by 50 basis points outside a scheduled gathering, while the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, announced uh, that the nation will borrow almost £100 billion more in coming years than predicted a few months ago. In our view, the large fiscal loosening lessens the need for the Bank of England to proceed uh, for, uh, with more uh, rate cuts. And with other major central banks expected to continue easing, this may allow the pound to rebound, at least against the likes of Aussie, Kiwi and CAT. Now, from uh, Germany, we get the ZW survey for, uh, for March. The current conditions index is expected to have slid further into the negative territory to minus 30 from minus 15.7. This would uh, mark the eighth straight month with a negative sign. Uh, while the economic sentiment index is also expected to tumble into negative waters to minus 29 from uh, 8.7. Now, with the coronavirus spreading in the EU at a fast pace, a slump in those indices appears more, more than normal to us. From the Eurozone as a whole, we get the labor cost index and wages for the fourth quarter. The labor cost index is forecast to have accelerated to 3% year over year from 2.6% in the third quarter while no forecast is currently available for the wages rate. Now flying to the US, we have retail sales, industrial and manufacturing production data all for February. 
both headline and core sales are expected to have slowed to 0.2% month over month from 0.3%, while the industrial and manufacturing production rates are forecast to have returned into positive territory. Namely, the industrial production rate is expected to have uh, risen to 0.4% month over month from minus 0.3%, while the manufacturing uh, production one is forecast to have increased to 0.3% month over month from minus 0.1%. The jolts uh, job openings for January are also coming out and the forecast, and the forecast uh, points to a small decline. With regards to the energy market, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for tonight, during the early Asian morning Wednesday, New Zealand's current account balance for the fourth quarter is coming out and the forecast points to a narrowing deficit. Japan's trade data are also due to be released, uh, with the nation's uh, deficit expected to have turned into surplus. We also have one speaker during the Asian session, and this is RBA Assistant uh, Governor uh, Lucy Ellis. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description uh, below. So, goodbye from me. Have a great day and I hope I see you again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.